यात्री कृपया ध्यान दें। सेलिब्रेट लाइफ दो चार शून्य पांच एक्सप्रेस अपने निर्धारित समय पर प्लेटफॉर्म क्रमांक जूम से रवाना हो रही है यदि आप इस एक्सप्रेस में यात्रा कर रहे हैं तो अन्य यात्रियों की सुविधा के लिए आपसे निवेदन है कि कृपा करके अपने अपने माइक और वीडियो को म्यूट पर रखें। हम आशा करते हैं कि आपकी यात्रा आनंदमय हो टिंग टॉन्ग Salam, Namaste, and welcome, one and all. I am Rakesh Mabin, your host for this morning, and I am accompanied by my beloved wife, Nisha Mabin, as co-host. On behalf of UGM Vasu Mission and the UGM, we welcome you all in the blessed name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, each and every one of you who travelled from afar, and we hope your Zoom or your YouTube journey. was hassle free special thanks to covid 19 for driving this digital transformation paul in his first epistle to thessalonians reminds us to give thanks in all circumstances for this is the will of god and that is what encourages us to celebrate life even in this lockdown situation so we put up something for each of us to see why do we call this event celebrate life in a short while 
you'll get to see the reason on your screen. like to call upon one of our youth directors, Pastor Frenny Isaac, to open this conference with a word of prayer. Good morning, everyone. Let us bow down our heads and pray. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Lord, our rock and redeemer, thank you that you are perfectly faithful. You never forget, never fail, and never take back a promise. You have promised that when your people gathered in your name, your presence is here with us. Fix our eyes on you and let our ears be attentive to your voice. Restore to us the joy of our salvation as we worship you. God of grace and glory, as we approach this day of coming together to this youth conference, favor, your favor be with us and your presence be with us. Pour out your Holy Spirit to bless, to cleanse our hearts and minds, to open our spirits to the unseen possibilities before us. Bless and guide each one of us who are gathered here and about to gather through this digital media to praise you, worship you, and hear your word. We commit all of us into thy mighty hands. Brother Selvam, Brother Anand Pillai, host, moderators, and all the technical team, and all our UBM family, office bearers, IS, and all our friends into your hands. Fill all of us with your spirit. Bless this time of celebrating life and teach us how to celebrate life in the midst of trials and troubles. Make us passionate for your kingdom and your vision of what this world can be. Renew us in your mission to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of this world. May this event begin in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Preni Isaac, for the reassuring invocation. Main tujh se pyaar karta hu. Main tujh se pyaar karta hu. Oh, me too. No, no. This was not for you. What do you mean not for me? Uh, I was actually reminded of a song, and I was oh. trying to think of it. मैं तुझसे प्यार करता हूँ यीशु। Ladies and gentlemen, it is indeed a blessing to introduce to you this young singer-songwriter and a worship leader, who has touched many hearts with his music ministry. The man whose Instagram bio declares, "God owns me." It is none other than our beloved brother, Brother Selvam. Yes, I'm on a mission. You should go. 
Hello everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Such an honor and a joy to be here with the United Basel Mission Church of Mumbai. Uh, God is so good. Even in the midst of lockdown, God has enabled each one of us to come together in this fashion and to worship Jesus. Amen. Uh, this event is called Celebrate Life. And Jesus himself says that I am the way, the truth and the life. So when we say that we are here to celebrate life, we are celebrating Jesus. I'm so honored to be here. I'm so grateful to God for the entire uh, Celebrate Life team and the committee members and all our pastors and committee leaders for giving me this opportunity. Come on, let's sing this song called Chilla Kar Gaunga, Sabko Main Sunaunga. Amen. Can we do this together? Even though we are in our respective houses, uh, God's presence is not limited within the Zoom call. Amen. How many of you believe it? I think we have this raise a hand option or, you know, if you want to give a thumbs up, you can do it in your, uh, uh, using that. Yeah, I can see Angela, Jitana doing it. Come on. So let's celebrate life, celebrate Jesus together. Come on, let's sing this song. Chilla kar gaunga. Come on, you sing this. They go crucified. Everyone together, go man, chill out, girl, go, 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 go,
like that i am in your house i am in your house and just standing in front of you and your family and just celebrating jesus celebrating life with you amen amen even as we sing our songs as we lift up our voices i want to remind you about this verse it says that our lord is enthroned on the praises on the praises of his people amen it could be in our different houses but when we as a family choose to seek God, choose to open our mouth and worship Jesus, all our circumstances will change. Hallelujah. Amen. God inspired to write this song. God inspired me to write this song called Tuchahiye Muchko. And uh, this was inspired by a, a Psalm, uh, Psalm 27 verse 4. It says, one thing I desire, Lord, and this is what I seek, that I may dwell in your house all my days. Amen. So this has been my desire. And even as we sing this song, you know, I pray that God will stir your heart and your heart will yearn and long for him more than ever before. Amen. So let this, let's sing this song together. Mm -hmm. Chahi hai mujko. Oh, 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 oh. You sing this. Har ek shan me, har ek din me, ish chahi mujko. Har ek shan me, har ek din me, ish chahi mujko. It's very simple. Har ek shan me, har ek din me, ish chahi mujko. Har ek shan me, har ek din me, ish chahi mujko. Tu chahi mujko. Tu chahi mujko. Tu chahi mujko. Next verse says, Har ek baat mein, mushkil halat mein, Yeshu chahiye mujko. Amen. How apt is this sentence for us to declare in this situation? Har ek baat mein, mushkil halat mein, Yeshu chahiye mujko. Come on. Har ek baat mein, mushkil halat mein, Yeshu chahiye mujko. Yes, har ek baat mein, mushkil halat mein, ish chahiye mujko. Har ek baat mein, mushkil halat mein, ish chahiye mujko. Tu chahiye mujko, tu chahiye mujko, tu chahiye mujko, tu chahiye mujko. This 
this is the bridge of the song it says ek hi var tujhse mangu sada tere sang raho this was the heart cry of king david can this become a song today ek hi var tujhse mangu sada tere sang raho ek hi var tujhse mangu sada tere sang raho ek hi var tujhse mangu kon sada tere sang raho ek hi var tujhse mangu sada tere sang raho चाहिए मुझको तू चाहिए मुझको तू चाहिए मुझको तू चाहिए मुझको चाहिए मुझको सिंह साथ चाहिए मुझको तू चाहिए मुझको तू चाहिए Amen I was able to see few of you singing this song with me you know you just have to sing this tu chahiye mujhko tu chahiye mujhko ye dil mein do tujhko hallelujah it's very simple but right now as we declare as we express our hearts desire to Jesus you know he will fill our house with his presence amen Can we do do this once again? Just the chorus. To chahi hai mujko. To chahi. I was able to see Sharon and Manna singing with me. Can we all have? You know, maybe you can just switch on your videos and just sing this song with me. To chahi hai mujko. Come on. To chahi hai mujko. Wow. To chahi hai mujko. To chahi hai mujko. Come on. तू चाहिए मुझको तू चाहिए मुझको कौन निकल तू चाहिए मुझको कौन तू चाहिए तू चाहिए मुझको तू चाहिए मुझको तू चाहिए मुझको तू चाहिए मुझको हर एक बात में मुश्किल हालात में ये चाहिए मुझको हर एक बात में हर एक बात में मुश्किल हालात में ये चाहिए मुझको हर एक बात में मुश्किल हालात में ये चाहिए मुझको हर एक बात में मुश्किल हालात में ये चाहिए चाहिए मुझको कमाल प्लांटली अपनी आवाज में सिंग दिस तू चाहिए मुझको तू चाहिए मुझको तू चाहिए मुझको या गॉड इज प्लीज विद योर सॉन्ग रक्षा तू चाहिए मुझको ये दिल में दो तुझको ओ ओ ओ ओ Somebody make some noise Hallelujah 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 I can just see angels dancing in your own living rooms your bedrooms Hallelujah in your apartment God is in our midst Hallelujah The next song that we are going to sing is called Waymaker Amen we worship the one who who dwells in our midst amen i would request
the person who is projecting the lyrics to just put it on so that we can sing this together i'm so glad to see each one of you thank you so much for switching on your videos god is so much pleased by your worship i'm telling you the glory cloud of god is just covering you let's worship his character that he never sleeps he never slumbers he says that every word that comes out of his mouth does not return to him void 
that's his promise come on i'm just speaking this life i'm speaking the word of god into your life in jesus name that everything that you had planned for this moment this season god says i have greater plans for you oh my thoughts are way higher than your thoughts my ways are much higher than your ways says the lord so can we declare and confess even when i don't see it you're working even when i don't feel it you're working you never stop you never stop working you never stop come on everyone together even when i don't see it you're working even when i don't feel it you're working you never stop you never stop working you never stop you never stop working way maker miracle worker promise keeper light in the darkness my god that is who you are for you are way maker miracle worker promise keeper light in the darkness my god that is who you are can i pray for you maybe i'm not standing in front of you but i know this for sure that the presence of god is in your house so if you honor his presence so if you honor his word will you please bow your head will you please close your eyes will you please settle down wherever you are and just turn your hearts to god and say lord i devote myself to you lord jesus this moment we might be in our comfort zones we might be in our couches lord but we honor your presence god we honor you jesus we honor your word father lord today lord things might seem so different lord father we are in our houses all our plans and all our strategies and all the the things that we might have planned lord is not right now happening but we know this for sure that your thoughts are higher than our thoughts your ways are higher than our ways lord father we know this for sure that you have a great future for us we know this for sure lord your life that throne flow from the throne of god is flowing right now into our lives right now into our houses right now into our families god thank you jesus for your life that lightens up is up lord father we bless each one of the people who are right now joining us on facebook and also lord through the zoom call lord father we pray father that your life and your truth and your way will lord overpower them we give you glory honor and praise in jesus name we pray amen amen thank you brother selvam for that beautiful time of worship we pray that god continues to use you mightily for his glory it is a humble privilege to share this platform with our esteemed speaker mr anand pillai he is the managing director of leadership matters a management consulting firm focusing on building an intrapreneurial culture in organizations yes you heard it right intrapreneurial culture in organizations his illustrious corporate experience spans over 3 and 1/2 decades from gm to ceo to clo in fortune 500 companies in addition mr pillai is a leadership coach and an organization transformation guru and the list goes on and on and on personally i am inspired to learn from him how a life can transform from a hopeless rope to a life filled with endless hope we give to you a speaker for this afternoon Mr Anand Pillai if you have any questions or queries for him feel free to post it in the zoom chat box or in the facebook comment section these will be addressed at the end of the session over to you anand sir yes i'm going to share my screen uh, here let me see i've got that can all of you see the screen i need a confirmation if you are able to see this yes 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 okay, yes wonderful yes, wonderful sir. okay great uh, so i uh, i'm really excited about the uh, topic that you have celebrate life and uh, that is a very important uh, topic for all of us and we need to recognize and understand that we can celebrate life not when things are going well that any johnny can do 
celebrating life when things are not going well is where uh, the child of God comes into the picture and that is where the grace of God is at its full uh, level. So let me give you the context and I'm glad that UBM youth and uh, the organizers have come out with this wonderful uh, topic of celebrating uh, life uh, when uh, there are enough reasons to complain, when there are enough reasons to uh, possibly uh, say, listen, where is life when uh, uh, there is so much of calamity, there is so much of uncertainty, there is so much of ambiguity, there is so much of complexity, and there is so much of volatility in this world. So I'm going to talk to you from largely Daniel chapter one, and you will be able to see the screen uh, here. And uh, uh, this is actually originally a six part series. It is called Living Dangerously or Leading a Daniel's Life in a Nebuchadnezzar's uh, World. So I'm going to uh, uh, go into a particular poll that I want all of you to answer, okay? And I want you to answer this question. Is work a result of sin? So go to your mobile phones. And um, uh, I don't know how you have logged into Zoom. Uh, but go to your mobile phones. Go to www.menti.com. And uh, I will click this link just now. And you will be able to see uh, the code. www.menti.com and uh, you will get a code and once you get the code you will be able to answer the uh, question through the phone enter the code and um, you will be able to the code is 945439 can you all see this part of the screen now 945439 can the organizers confirm if you can see this part of the screen yes. the question is uh, with the menti www.menti.com he is asking us uh, yeah join. asking you can you see the uh, screen www.menti.com yes we can we can see that wonderful so please go to your mobile phones and answer this question for me and we will get the results on the screen i want to interact with people and then go forward the code is 9454439 so once you enter that, submit, and then you can give us an answer whether you believe, yes, work is a result of sin, or no, work is not a result of sin, or you don't know, and you are not sure. Okay? Go ahead and answer, and uh, you need to be fast, fast as fingers first. Youth will always be very uh, fast on the thing. Can you see the dynamic nature of the screen that is uh, uh, tabulating the results as you are answering? So 23 people have answered, 67% uh, of them have said uh, work is not a result of sin, 23% of them are saying yes, and about 10 or 11% of them are not. We have got about 336 people. Uh, we need a minimum 150 plus uh, people to answer. Be very quick. Go to www.menti.com and uh, key in the code 9454. Three nine, and then give your answer. I'll wait for a few seconds. Code is nine four five four three nine. Somebody has put it uh, there. You can also see it in small print there on the top. www.menti.com and the key in nine four five four three nine and give us your answer. 95 for 96, 98 people, 100. Come on, you need to be fast. Youth, fastest finger first is the response. Yes, it's rapidly increasing. 111 people, 113 people have answered. A large number of them are saying work is not a result of sin. If work is not a result of sin, why are you complaining? Well, go on, go on, 122. 123. I'll wait till about 150 uh, because that's when we get what I would call a critical mass or a good sample size for us to come to a meaningful conclusion. 137, 138. If you can see, 142. This is the uh, indication that I'm getting where people are answering. 149, 151. Okay. 
So if you look at out of the 155 people who have answered, 157 people who have answered so far, 59 or 60 percent of the people believe that work is not a result of sin. And about 31 percent of the people believe that yes, work is a result of sin. And about 12 percent of them, they are not sure. They don't know or they are not sure. Now, I personally am concerned about the 30 plus 12 or 31 plus 12 people who are not clear that work is not a result of sin. Now, let me go back to my presentation. Uh, the reason why I ask this question is we need to be 100% sure that work is not a result of sin. Because our attitude to work will be very different if we think that it is a result of sin. At the same time, if we are clear that work is not a result of sin, our attitude to work, our attitude to study, our attitude to everything will be very, very different. And that is the reason why I have brought this uh, uh, topic or the question right at the uh, uh, beginning. So look at Genesis chapter 1 verse 28. The very first command that God gave us is that we need to be fruitful and increase in number. That is very important uh, for us. We need to be fruitful. We need to be productive. And we need to work. We need to multiply. God gave this command. And this is the very first command that he gave immediately after God created man and woman. In fact, he said he blessed them, both Adam and Eve. And then he gave them the command, be fruitful. Be productive, be active, and increase in number. Genesis chapter 2, verse um, 15. The Lord took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to work it. And this is all much before the fall. Fall happened in chapter 3. Much before the fall, God told man to work it, work at uh, the uh, garden. God himself worked and God himself was uh, at uh, work. So that's something that we need to recognize and understand. Work is not the result of sin. But if work is not the result of sin, then what is a result of sin? What did God curse? God cursed the ground where he said, because of the sin, through painful toil, you will eat of it. So work is not the result of sin, but Toil is a result of sin. Painful toil is a result of sin. Genesis chapter 3, verse 17. And this is what we need to understand. God does not curse the work. But what has happened as a result of the fall is the fact that our work has become tedious, our work has become toilsome, our work has become burdensome. A prayer that we'll have to pray in today's world is Psalm 90, verse 17. Bless the work of our hands, Lord. Establish love, thou the work of our hands. Because we as believers, we put uh, the best of our effort into the job. But our work is not yielding the desired results. There is a lot of efficiency loss. There is a lot of disruption because of sin, because of hostility, because of non-cooperation with our uh, colleagues, even believing uh, colleagues, you know, in unfair systems, injustice, everything. But if you look at in the Bible, the word <coughs> for work uh, and worship is very uh, clear. It is the same. Uh, Solomon writing in uh, uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 18 to 19, very clearly says, after looking at the way things are on earth, Here's what I've decided. And Solomon is the richest man in the world. He need not have to work. But this is what he's saying at the end of his life. Take care of yourself. Have a good time and make the most of whatever job you have. As long as God gives you life. It's not that you make the most out of all the good jobs that you have. Make the most out of your dream job. Make the most out of whatever job you have. As long as God gives you life. And that's about it, is what Solomon says. That's the human lot. Yes, we should make the most of what gives both the bounty, bounty and the capacity to enjoy. We should celebrate life however difficult it is. We should celebrate our work. We should celebrate our studies 
however toilsome it is because accepting what's given and delighting in celebrating in the work this is god's gift so we look at what we have to see in chapter 1 so the chapter 1 overview that i have is simply this there is no secular or spiritual distinction we sometimes have a distinction our brother is from the corporate world we are from the spiritual world no in when the way god looks at it he looks at only uh, the secular uh, or uh, spiritual together as one we will see that in chapter 1 verse 1 the second truth and the reality that we will have to uh, learn before we can really celebrate life is understand the truth that the rules of the professional world are professional and we will see that in verse 4 the third one which we also need to recognize and accept before we can truly celebrate life is the fact that the temptations and trials come to us on a daily basis daniel chapter 1 verse 8 and we'll get into that in a greater detail but a shift and a paradigm shift comes when you come to point number 4 we always think that god operates as we cooperate with him no 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 that is a wrong one god cooperates with us after we operate Gen- uh, D- daniel chapter 1 verse 9 see many people wrongly understand philippians chapter 4 verse 13 they think that god can do all things through me or god can do all things through me even as i can cooperate i cooperate with him i don't know where the god that uh, was yes in essence god can do all things but the philippians chapter 4 verse 13 says i can do all things through christ to strengthen me the problem with many of us is we are all passive believers we are saying god you do what you have to do i will stay quiet i will cooperate with you now that is what i call a defeated christian life that is what i call a uh, surrendered uh, to the world christian life a victorious christian life is one where you learn to celebrate with the strength with the help and the capacity of god because god cooperates with us after we operate and we will see that in daniel chapter 1 verse 9 but the blessing and the encouragement that i have uh, which gives us the centrality for us to celebrate life is whatever job whatever studies whatever task god has given us he equips us for all that he has called us for let us go into details into each one of them so if you look at daniel chapter 1 verse 1 we see uh, a very painful realization and the painful realization is a child of god or a man of god from god's chosen race he is handed over to a heathen king let me read that verse for you daniel, daniel chapter 1 verse 1 in the third year of the reign of jehoiakim or jehoiakim i don't know i mean i'm not good with these uh, jewish uh, names you know jehoiakim jehoiakim i something but i've pronounced it well i am very comfortable with the south indians in the bible uh, you know i mean i am sure you all know of the south indians in the bible there are a lot of south indians in the bible in fact the biggest stalwarts in the bible are all south indians i live in north india and i tell all my friends learn to respect the south indian stalwarts in the bible they say south indians in the bible yes where are they give me their names so i gave the names of all the south indians in the bible and please understand and respect the south indians in the bible they are all the ayas isaiah jeremiah nehemiah hezekiah josiah please respect your ayya ayya now having said that on the lighter side there is only one north indian uh, and that north indian is in the negative sense jehoiakim is one jewish person the north indian is naham but leave those names aside let us get into this we think that there is a secular world there is a spiritual world no there is no secular or spiritual world at that point in time you will have to go back in history the jews were god's chosen race children of israel were god's chosen race and who was jehoiakim he was the king of judah one of the 12 tribes the strongest tribe and who is nebuchadnezzar a heathen god hands over a jewish king from the 12 tribes and the leader of the tribe or uh, the kingdom of judah 
and he is handing him over to a heathen king. The story does not end there. It goes on and says, and the Lord delivered Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hands. Who delivered? The Lord delivered. Whom? An Israelite king, one from the chosen race. And along with that, he also delivered whom? What? He delivered or he let Jehoiakim take the articles of the things of God into his temple. Now, this is a painful truth and a painful realization. At that point in time, if you remember, children of Israel were God's chosen race. The Ark of the Covenant was a very sacred covenant, sacred uh, uh, monument, sacred ornament. If you touch the articles of the things of God in an unholy manner at that point in time, you will never live to tell the story. But God is allowing a heathen to take the articles of the things of God. Why? Because in his eyes, he does not see children of Israel separately as the other heathens. He looks at only two categories of people, obedient people and disobedient people. As we come before the throne of God, we need to understand that God will favor us not because we belong to a particular race. God will favor us because we are obedient to him. We are living a life that is pleasing. And the day our life is not pleasing to him, just like he handed over Jehoiakim, the king of Judah, he will not hesitate to hand us over to the troubles of the world. And we need to recognize and understand that every job, every profession is blessed by God. Paul writing to the Colossians in chapter 3, verse 23 and 24, he says, whatever you do, whether you are a peon, a manager, a plumber, a carpenter, a teacher, a nurse, a doctor, a executive, a vice president, a chairman, a managing director, whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as if you are working for the Lord and not for men, since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. My biodata says that I worked for over 36 year, years in senior positions in Fortune 500 companies. And the last four years, uh, four and a half years, I'm running my own company with the help of a few partners, a company called Leadership Matters. But in all these close to 40 years of my professional life, I have had the same boss. So my friends say, wow, not bad, you're privileged. You had the same boss. You mean to say that the person who first recruited you, he then recruited you into the next company and your boss continued? I said, no, I work for different companies. I started my career with uh, DCM as a management trainee after two years of management training in uh, uh, FMS University of Delhi and CSMS Systems, uh, Center for Systems and Management Studies in IIT Delhi. I joined the Tatas. And I joined the Tatas and I worked for the Tatas for 10 long years, for six long years. I worked after that for two American companies. 14 years or close to 14 years, I worked for Hetfield Technologies. Close to four years, I worked for Reliance Industries. And then after that, I'm on my own. The bosses, earthly bosses were different. But my heavenly boss was the same because whatever I did, I worked at it as if I was working for the Lord. I did not work as if I was working unto the Tatas or unto this multinational company or unto the um, HCL technologies or whatever. I recognized these earthly authorities as delegated authorities from God. My attitude to work was very different. My attitude to work was what Paul required us as working for the Lord. Now, I'll tell you one thing. The moment you think of your boss as your earthly boss and your heavenly boss or as the ultimate authority, you will love him or hate him. You love her or hate or you will have a positive attitude or a negative attitude based on how good, bad or indifferent or different that particular person is. But the moment we all recognize, the moment we all recognize that we are working as unto the Lord, our attitude will be constant and different because our God doesn't change. Our God is a constant God. Our God is a just God. The earthly authorities are delegated authorities. Romans chapter 13, verse 1 and verse 7 says, there is no authority except that which God has established. 
in fact every authority that is established is established by god and i want to thank god for the early realization of this truth that the earthly authorities are uh, delegated authorities and therefore my commitment to work it took a long time it took almost four time four years of my professional career uh, to understand that listen if i work as into my earthly masters it will be good or bad based on how good or bad they are but if i work as into the lord my, the lord will take care of me because my inheritance will come from him it is him whom i will go to we in the corporate world have got something known as skip level reporting what is skip level reporting skip level reporting is basically if you are unhappy with your immediate boss you can complain to your boss's boss we need to recognize that our ultimate authority is the lord god almighty we have the right to bring our issues to him only when we work as unto him so if we want to bring our complaints our issues to our heavenly father we need to submit to the earthly authorities i'll also tell you another thing and this is my realization in the close to 40 years of my professional life if you don't submit to an authority you will never be given the position of authority we need to learn to submit before we can learn to manage we need to learn to follow before we can learn to lead the beautiful thing is in the old testament the word for work and worship is the same root word of that worship is a lifestyle of enjoying god loving him and giving him ourselves for to be used for his purposes uh, and this is what rick warren wrote in his book purpose driven life i i was in bombay uh, in during my bachelor days 1984 to uh, 86 and uh, afterwards for my corporate career uh, with reliance industries Uh, between 2011 and 2015 i was worshiping in a local church and the church changed their worship timings or earlier worship timings was 10:30 to 12:30 and they said listen we need more time in the house of god and we need more times in the presence of god so that we can be equipped to change uh, the city so that we can armed and equipped to go into the city and really make an impact so they said we will change the worship timings or revise it from 10:30 to 12:30 to at uh, 10 o'clock to 1 o'clock so that we spend more time in the presence of god and be equipped and go and go and impact the city that particular sunday when the timings were changed i happened to be preaching and then i told the pastor i said pastor i want to do a slight change in the uh, worship timing i want to change it uh, you have uh, changed it from 10:30 to 12:30 to 10 o'clock to 1 o'clock on every sunday i want to change the worship timing and listen to me slow carefully i want to change the worship timing from 1 o'clock on sunday till 10 o'clock the following sunday i hope you got it that is the real worship it is easy it is comfortable it is not strenuous for you to worship god in the house of god to sing and dance and praise the lord and hallelujah with jump and all that in the church but as you get out of the church as you get into the world how you respond to somebody who cuts you on the traffic i have spoken in many churches where there are multiple services in a day and there is a big contention in the parking lot when you take your car out and when somebody is bringing the car in how do you respond now i live in delhi and i've lived in bombay also but bombay the traffic is more or less regulated in delhi the traffic is chaotic and i've lived in bangalore in my earlier days for 21 days 21 years of my life i was in bangalore and there also the traffic is chaotic in fact the cars in bangalore and uh, delhi are very romantic and once in a while they want to get physical they want to make bumper to bumper love and when the cars get physical the owners come out and they start speaking a language which is not what you will be commonly familiar with it is not english kannada hindi punjabi but it is special characters asterisk adrenate of hash exclamation mark that is the reaction how do you respond when troubles come how do you respond when difficulties come how do you respond when uncomfortable people come into your life one of my favorite heroes is uh, uh, <coughs> eric little eric little in his uh, uh, story he, he was the one who uh, played or his uh, life is played in this movie chariots of fire and this is what he says 
He says he was an athlete. He ran the 1924 Olympics in Paris. He says, listen, I know that God has made me for a purpose, but he has also made me fast. And when I run, I feel his pleasure. And I want each one of us to revise this statement for our lives as we begin to celebrate and write our mission statement. I know that God has made me for a purpose and I can say that for myself. For Dash, in the case of Eric Little, it was for China. For me, it is for North India. But he has also made me a strategist. My post-graduation specialization was strategy and marketing. He has also made me a marketer. He has also made, made me a project management person. Whatever he has made you, fill in the blanks. I know that God has made you for a purpose, for a particular purpose. But he has also gifted you with an earthly gift. He has gifted you as a singer. He has gifted you as an um, uh, artist. He has gifted you as a manager, a software programmer, a teacher, a nurse. Whatever he has made you. When you do that job, and when I run, I feel his pleasure. When I manage, I feel his pleasure. That is where you learn to celebrate God. By recognizing and acknowledging that God has given you that gift and you are working as unto him and not unto an earthly master. Brother Lawrence wrote a very powerful book, Practicing the Presence of God. We always have, when we come to the house of God, that is the presence of God. But when we go out into the street, when we go out into the movie, that is not a presence of God. No, God's presence is there everywhere. We need to recognize and acknowledge his presence wherever we are. God's presence is where we are. This Catholic monk, Brother Lawrence, this is, he was a cook. This is what he said. For me, the time of activity does not differ from the time of prayer. And in those noise and clatter of my kitchen, while several persons are calling for as many different things, I possess God in as great a tranquility as when I am on the blessed knees. We need to recognize when I'm in my office, I'm in the presence of God. When I'm in front of my boss, I'm in the presence of God. When I'm in front of the customer, I'm in the presence of God. When I'm with my colleagues, I'm in the presence of God. Only then can I truly celebrate life. I like the message translation, Romans chapter 12, verse 1, which says, take your everyday, ordinary life, you're sleeping, you're eating, you're going to work, and you're walking around and place it before God as an offering. The second point that we need to recognize is the fact that God gives us the temptations or the rules of the professional world are professional. If you look at Daniel chapter 1, verse 4, we see that the parameters of the selection criteria that Nebuchadnezzar used were secular credentials, professional credentials. He did not choose them because they were Jews. He chose them because they were young men from the royal family and nobility, without any physical defect, handsome, showing aptitude for every kind of learning, well-informed, quick to understand and qualified to serve in the king's palace. After that, they were actually selected for a three-year management training program. And after the three-year management training program, they were supposed to get qualified to serve in the king's palace. What are the seven parameters that Nebuchadnezzar used, which I also use, and a lot of corporate, whether it is starters or it is multinational companies like Accenture, IBM, uh, Google, uh, Facebook, all of them have these competencies for selection. What are those competencies? And before I go forward, I want to give you a disappointing truth, and that is there is no believer's quota in any organization. Let us understand that. What is the criteria? The criteria is given in Daniel chapter 1, verse 4. Seven competencies that are necessary for strategic roles. What are those seven competencies? The first competency, and we need to recognize and play a very important role in that is, that is age and upbringing. Every management training position, every senior position has got an age limit. Not only an age limit, a noble uh, upbringing. They place a very high importance on your upbringing in the interview. Yes, your knowledge, yes, your aptitude, all that is fine. But they put a very high importance on your character. Nebuchadnezzar looked at Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and one of the things that pleased him is because they were from the royal nobility. They were from the Jewish family. The Jewish family, they trained their children in the fear and instruction of the Lord. Nebuchadnezzar understood that. Let us place a very high value on our upbringing. 
The second parameter that we need to be recognizing and painfully heeding to is that uh, parameter is we need to be physically and medically fit. Every appointment order that you get, in fact, even if you get into a professional course like IIT, they will say your admission is subject to clearance of the medical test. Every appointment order will say your appointment is subject to clearance of the medical test. Why? Because the body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. We need to take care of our Cells. We need to be physically fit, we need to be mentally fit in order to do the job, the challenging job that is required of us. And that is very, very important. And the words in bracket is the exact word that is given in uh, Daniel chapter 1 verse 4. And it's important that we recognize uh, this and take it uh, forward. So if you see one other uh, thing, the third one is we need to be learned to be well uh, groomed. Well groomed is uh, very important and we need to be uh, clear uh, of that. I'm asking them to turn the video on uh, so that we can also see me. Well groom, many times you know what happens, there are a lot of companies that I work for uh, where I worked in the software industry for close to three decades and in all these three decades many of the programmers they would come to office in the t-shirt that they slept in. Anything wrong? Well nothing really wrong they will do their programming very well, but they will not be in a position to be put in front of clients. They will not be given strategic roles. We need to learn to be well-groomed. And the words that is given in the Bible is handsome and presentable. Learn to be presentable. There is a thing that is there. It is called unconscious bias or appearance bias. The way we appear has got a subtle impact on the decision-making of our stakeholders around us. You can go and Google this unconscious bias or appearance bias. In fact, research was done in various universities and various courts, and they found out in US that uh, the judges gave favorable judgments to people or criminals who are looking nice and baby faced and whatever, but they were criminals. But they also gave harsh judgments on people who are appearing uh, very rough, uh, very um, unruly appearance wise. Why am I saying this? Whether in the corporate world, whether in business or life, people have an appearance bias or an unconscious bias. And therefore, in the professional world, we need to learn to be well-groomed. The fourth characteristic which we need to have is we need to be having learning agility, having the ability to learn every kind of thing. When you enter a particular company, one set of business is there, one set of customers are there. But as the company grows, the company's business model changes, the company's domain changes, the company's technology area changes, and you need to learn everything that is coming. That is where you will celebrate life. The fifth one is you need to be well informed. Know what is happening around know the environment. You cannot be a successful executive in any organization, in any role, if you only know that which is required in your role. You need to know the other departments. You need to know the other areas. General knowledge. My big frustration is whenever I meet a believer, uh, he or she has committed intellectual suicide. Because the moment they come to know the Lord, they stop reading other uh, material. They stop upgrading themselves. If you want to be a child of God, successful in leading places, God will enable you only when you are well informed. We need to be like men of Hisachar in uh, David's kingdom. Men who understood the times and knew what Israel should do. You also need to have a mental attitude, quick to understand. Just like in our student days, you know, we knew the answer of the exam after we came out of the exam. You are, and by God's grace, I've had the opportunity to meet with and uh, interact with very senior people. When they ask me a question, the opportunity window to answer that question is one and a half minutes, maximum two minutes. In that, when a customer gives me a problem, I got very one and one, one and a half minutes to respond. We need to have that high mental attitude, aptitude or quick to understand. And of course, we need to be competent to serve things, know how to behave in front of senior uh, people. Here I want to give a clarification. Many of us wrongly understand what excellence is. Excellence is not doing, uh, let me uh, give that clarification. Excellence is being your best and not be, being the best. Let me say that once again. Excellence is being your best and not being the best. Supposing excellence is being the best, how many people in the world can be excellent? Only one. 
but supposing excellence is being your best every one of us can be excellent understanding this can make all the difference in the world i gave a speech in a um, uh, or a keynote address in a school and uh, there i said everybody can be excellent because excellence is doing your best and not being your best a mother she came uh, mother of a child she came and she said sir uh, you said everybody can be excellent can my son be excellent i said sure immediately she translated and she said can my son come first in class no i did not say that but she translated excellence is equal to come to first in class so i said yes ma'am your son can come first in class she said you don't know my son that monkey and obviously your son was not a monkey uh, she said no sir can you you tell me that monkey can he come first in class so to make sure that she understood things rightly i said yes ma'am you can your son can come first in class she said you don't know my son that monkey fella i said ma'am no problem your son can come first in class she folded her hands and she asked me sir how long will it take and what must i do i said it will not take a long time and you simply will have to put your son in a class where there's only one student he definitely will come first the problem with us is we have gone on the path of excellence meaning being the best god has created each one of us as a first class original let us not die a second grade copy let us each one of us do our best a beautiful promise that all of us can claim is proverbs chapter 22 verse 29 do you see somebody who is skilled in their work somebody who is putting in their best in their work they will serve before kings and not before officials of low rank let's go forward and uh, see what we have for the third uh, one okay the third one is the temptations and trials come to us on a daily basis as they began the management training program they got into a temptation what is that temptation well the temptation is big problem who daniel and his friends were given three tests day one of their management training and they were not supposed to eat that food because of three biblical reasons what were the three biblical reasons first one is the food was offered to idols and in exodus chapter 20 verse 3 they were clearly not supposed to eat that food second is some of the animals were unclean the jews at that point in time had the concept of clean animals and unclean animals leviticus chapter 20 verse 25 very clearly said that you cannot eat unclean animals and from the nebuchadnezzar the table there were some unclean animals the third reason why they were not supposed to eat that food was the meat had blood in it the animals were not sacrificed according to levitical norms Deuteronomy chapter 12 verse 23 very clearly says if the meat has got blood in it we cannot eat it so they have got day one temptation but i want to ask you the question and that question is this did nebuchadnezzar give that meat to them so that they compromise their faith no nebuchadnezzar gave them the uh, meat or the king's officials gave them the meat so that they can be healthy and that is what we need to recognize so what is the uh, thing that we need to oppose we need to oppose three daniel did not oppose a whole lot of other things daniel did not oppose their name change let us see what are the other things that we on a day to day basis keep on opposing first one daniel did not oppose the exile if you know that daniel was a captured he and his friends were captured they did not say sorry this is not our will this is not our career of choice this is not many people you know what happens in some of the b schools where i teach uh, they have a restriction that the first job that you get is the job that you will have to accept even though your dream company or whatever company your desired company comes later on if you have accepted a job offer if you have gone to a particular interview um, you have got selected that's it and then a lot of people complain no no i went for the interview just like that but i did not want to get selected this is not the company of my choice because another company these people could have said that very clearly but they did not oppose they went there against their will second one they did not oppose the job description what was the job description that was given for daniel chatrak misha and abednego they were supposed to study the language and the literature of the times of the babylonians they were true blue jews psalm 137 very clearly says you cannot worship the lord in a strange land you cannot study that but they knew that this is an earthly responsibility and they did not oppose that they also did not oppose their name change immediately 
King Nabukandazar changed their names. Daniel, he made him Balthazar. Hananiah, he made him Shadrach. Mishael, he made him Meshach. Azariah, he made him Abednego. So your designation change, your job change, your exile, these are all category C issues. Once you recognize, recognize that you've got the Lord God Almighty as your ultimate boss, you don't have to worry about these small issues. What should you worry about? You should worry about matters that compromise your faith. All of us face challenges in life. Some give in and compromise. Others give up and quit. But few, like Daniel, conquer and go up so that they can truly celebrate life. I'll give you three rules of the game, three rules of the battle, so that in any and every situation, you can learn to celebrate life. First thing is, there are a lot of battles that are there. You don't have to fight every battle. Pick your battles. Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego pick their battles. They did not talk about all the things that was happening in the kingdom of Nebuchadnezzar. They did not talk about all the policies, all the ways of working there. But they chose to fight the battle, and that battle was something that was directly related to their faith. Pick your battles. The second one is, for some reason, indiscreetly, you have engaged in a battle. Learn to withdraw. You don't have to win every battle. Having engaged in a battle, you don't have to win every battle. Learn to withdraw. A lot of times, emotionally, we get involved in category C items. And when wisdom dawns on you, learn to withdraw. And the third one is, you don't have to fight battles that you can easily win. As a child of God, be still and know that God is in control. That's the thing. So what are the three rules of battle? Stand up for issues that matter to your values and belief. Don't be an irritating jerk who has to have an opinion and every, on anything and everything. We need to be people who are respected. And we need to be living in the real world. The Lord Jesus in John chapter 16, verse 33, says very clearly, I have told you these things so that in me you will have peace. In the world you will have trouble. Take heart. I have overcome the world. It's not that you have trouble now. It's not that you have trouble because of COVID. It's not that you have uh, uncertainty because of all this virus situation. In the first century, it was there. Before that, it was there. But God's word is a reassuring word. Take heed. I have overcome the world. Take heart. In this world, you will have trouble. But God gives us peace. 1 Corinthians 10, 13, Paul writing, he says, no temptation or trial or difficulty has overtaken you except that which is common to man. But God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide you a way out so that you can endure it. That is very important. That brings us to the fourth point that enables us to celebrate life. And what is that fourth point? God cooperates after we operate. First, Daniel made up his mind. Daniel chapter 1 verse 8. Daniel made up his mind that he would not defile himself. We as children of God, we must make a firm resolution. When I first read this verse, I read this in King James English. And this is what it said in the King James English. Daniel purposed in his heart not to defile himself. We need to be clear. We need to make a strong resolution that we will not define ourselves. Once he does that in verse 8, you see what happens, what follows immediately? Now God caused or God granted Daniel favor and compassion in the sight of the commander of the officials. After Daniel made. Verse 8 comes before. I know that when we are in a difficulty, we pray that the difficulty will be taken off. That is an easy one. But when you are in front of a difficult customer, don't pray that the customer will change. Pray that God will give you the strength to face that customer. When you are in front of a difficult assignment or a difficult project, don't pray that the project will get changed. Pray that you will have the strength, the capacity to manage that project so that you can be given higher responsibility. When you're having a difficult boss, when you're having an unreasonable boss, don't pray that the boss will change or the boss will get transferred. Pray that you'll have the strength and capacity to work and manage under that boss because the God whom we worship is the God who enables us. And he gives us the strength. God does not direct a stationary car. Uh, Isaiah chapter 30, verse 20 and 21. Although he has given you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, your teachers will not be hidden from you. With your own eyes you will see. How will you see it? 
Will you stand stationary and see it? No. You will move in the direction. Whether you turn to the left or to the right, you will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. Now I come to the fifth one. After a few minutes, we'll get into questions. The fifth one, that fifth parameter that enables us to celebrate life. What is that? The joy and the assurance that he equips us for all that he has called us for. Everything that he has called us for, he equips us. If he has called me to be an artist, he will equip me to be an artist. If he has called me to be a manager, he will equip me to be a manager. If he has called me to be a salesperson, he will equip me to be a salesperson. Only problem is we need to know what we are called for. If he has called me to be a teacher, he will equip me to be a teacher. If he has called me to be a nurse, he will equip me to be a nurse. Daniel chapter 1 verse 17, God equipped these people. How did God equip the people? What were they supposed to study? They were supposed to study the language and the literature of the Babylonians. Difficult subject, non-Jewish subject, very and really cumbersome task. But if you look at Daniel chapter 1 verse 17, God gave the ability. You see there, God equipped them. He gave them knowledge and understanding of all kinds of literature and learning. This is the verse that all of us as men and women of God, as children of God, even if you are students, you need to claim. If you got a difficult subject, I had a very difficult subject. I loved physics. I got 100 on 100 on physics. I loved maths. I got 100 on 100 on maths. I loved chemistry, only one part, physical chemistry and inorganic chemistry. I did not like biochemistry. <laughs> I did not like organic chemistry. My I used to go crazy. But then I said, wait a minute, this is there in my subject, organic chemistry, biochemistry. As much as I don't like it, Lord, give me the ability to understand it. Give me the ability to fathom this. I know that in my capacity, I don't have. I can easily do anything in physics, anything in maths, but not organic chemistry, not biochemistry. Until I came across Daniel chapter 1 verse 17. I said, Lord, no problem. I will be able to take care of it with your strength because you will equip me. Then after I got into the job, in the early days, I was into software development. I was into programming. I loved coding. I really loved writing the code. But I had a big difficulty in documentation. I would not write the entire steps and people would, I would get a very poor appraisal rating on my performance. They said, no, your coding is very good, but your documentation is very bad. And then I again put Daniel chapter 1 verse 17. Then I got into sales. When I was getting into sales, I loved um, you know, selling products and services which are accepted by the customer. Whenever I get a typical customer, I say, uh, what is this? This is not my cup of tea. But then I came. This is part of my KRA. This is part of my job description. If God has called me for this, he will equip me. And that is something that we will have to learn and claim Daniel chapter 1, verse 17. And ultimately, when the appraisal period came, when the evaluation period came, you see how God's favor was upon his people as they submitted themselves. Daniel chapter 1, verse 19 and 20. When the king conducted the performance appraisal, when he talked to them, he found none equal to Daniel, Hananiah, Michelle, and Azariah. So they entered the king's service. They passed the management training and they went into the service of the kingdom. In every subject they were tested. In every paper they were tested. In every parameter they were appraised. In every matter of wisdom and understanding about which the king questioned them, he found them 10 times better than all the magicians and enchanters in his whole kingdom. He equips us for all that he has called for let us read Philippians chapter 4, verse 13 in a different light. Philippians chapter 4, verse 13 says, I have strength for all things in Christ, or I can do all things in Christ who empowers me. I am ready for anything in the Amplified Version, it says, and equal to anything through him who infuses inner strength into me, and I am self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. NIV says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. My dear brothers and sisters, I want to submit this as we come to a close. Whatever be your task, whatever be your situation, 
whatever be your um, environment, whatever be your job responsibility, however unreasonable, unfair, uh, however volatile, uncertain, complex and ambiguous your situation is. I have been through those situations. I have. In my lifetime, I have faced four major recessions. The biggest recession that I faced before this COVID recession is in 2008-2009 during the Lehman Brothers crash and the stock market crash. And after that also, we 2014, uh, you know, there was this recession. Recession has come and recession has gone. But I have learned to believe in the Lord who is the God of all this recession. If God has called me, he will equip me for what he has called me. I need to be discerning. I need to be having a steady walk with God. And that is important. Now I want to ask another question and then break it up into questions. So go to www.mentimeter.com again and then use the same code and answer this question and then we'll break ourselves into a question and answer. So again, the question here is, what defines the corporate world? The code is, 945439. What defines the corporate world? Go to www.menti.com 945439. What defines the corporate world? Okay, 35, 34 people are answering. On 66 people have answered. Ninety-five gone. A large number of you are saying competition defines the corporate world. Sixty-five of you out of hundred and fourteen. Socialism. Capitalism, only one of you are saying it is unethical, unreasonable demands, four of you. Politics, 15 or 16 of you. Hundred and forty-one. We'll get into our critical mass and then do an analysis. Hundred and forty-seven. Hundred and fifty six. Hundred and fifty nine. Now I'll come back. Yes, most of you have answered competition, and you're right. Competition is what defines the corporate world. But let me tell you one thing there is competition in the real world, and God encourages competition. I want to give you a verse, and that verse is Jeremiah chapter 12, verse 5. When Jeremiah comes to God and he complains about unfairness, injustice, God says, and you can look it up, I want you to write down Jeremiah chapter 12, verse 5. If you raced with men on foot and they have worn you out, how can you compete with horses? If you stumble in a safe country, how can you manage by the thickets of Jordan. God's mandate for us is to work in a competitive world and use the strength that he has given us. God's mandate for us is to work in an unfair, unjust world and then succeed there. Matthew chapter 10, the Lord Jesus very clearly says, I have sent you a sheep among wolves. Be wise or shrewd like serpents, yet harmless as doves. And that is what he is. This is a complaint. You're always righteous. Lord, when I bring the case, Jeremiah chapter 12, verse 1. But the question that he is asking is, why does the way of the wicked prosper? Why do all the faith, faithless live at ease? And God gives him the answer. If you have raised with men on foot and they have worn you out, 
how can you compete with horses? God wants us to compete. This is the word that was given to Jeremiah, and this is what will give us. If you stumble in a safe country, how will you manage in the thickets by the Jordan? In closing, I want to tell you, I've been involved in leadership development for a very long time in my secular role in Reliance Industries as senior executive vice president in HL Technologies as senior vice president and global head for talent transformation. Leaders are made in the courage zone and not in the comfort zone. When everything is comfortable, we don't know whether you are the right person or not. When everything is not comfortable and you perform differently, then we know that you are the right person. That is what we want to break. So as I come to give you this promise, whatever you are doing, do you see somebody skilled in their work? They will serve before kings. In another few seconds, I want to open up for a question and answer. There are moderators who will give me the questions and I will answer all your questions. And I want to leave this motto with you. Let your career be the carrier of the gospel. Whatever you are, teacher, student, plumber, carpenter, driver, manager, programmer, artist, salesperson, designer, quality person, manufacturing, whatever be your career, let it be a carrier of the gospel. Work as unto the Lord and God will honor you. Over to the moderators for the question and answer. Thank you, Anand sir, for that stirring message about our attitude towards work and how we can submit or follow and yet be a leader. We have received few queries during registrations and now through chats. Uh, we are still open to receive questions. Chat in comments. The key followed another amazing watch by Brother Sector. So, this is the time when we hand it over to our moderators, Mrs. Nehal Kalkada and uh, Mr. Griffin Salins, to facilitate the QA session. Thank you so much, Rakesh and Nisha. Well, greetings to one and all in the most precious name of our Lord and Savior on this bright Sunday afternoon. I'm sure we all are supercharged and spiritually nourished and we all have found a reason to celebrate life this afternoon after hearing through the wonderful session by Brother Anand Pillai. So as Rakesh and Nisha just mentioned, we have received lots and lots of questions at the time of registration and we also have our platform of chat box open for more questions to pour in. So Brother Anand Pillai, if you're ready, could we proceed yes. the question and answer round? Thank you so much. Shoot your questions. Yes. So here we go. All right. The How can you keep your faith or your hope as steady in the situation when everything is falling apart? I want to reverse ask the question. <laughs> if everything is not falling apart, what is the point in you keeping your faith? You will naturally keep your faith. This is the question that Satan asked God of Job. He is worshipping you. He is in praise because everything is going all right. Though the fig tree does not blossom, though the produce of the olive fail, yet will I rejoice. I will rejoice in the God of my salvation. You cannot keep your hope. You cannot keep your faith above in any situation when things are falling apart if you are focusing on the things on yourself. Here is an opportunity for us to get into God. Psalm 46 says, be still and know that I'm God. You know, things may be in turmoil. How can you keep your faith and hope steady? By keeping it on the one God who has told us in John chapter 16, verse 32. I have told you these things so that in me you will have peace. In the world you will have trouble. In the world, you will have everything falling apart. But in me, you will have peace. Be of good cheer, for I have overcome them. Simple answer to this is by continuing to depend on the Lord. In the last 40 years of my corporate world, I've had some very tough, very unreasonable, very demanding bosses, very trying circumstances. But I want to thank God for my faith. I came to know the Lord in the year 1979. And from that time onwards, my assurance is 
that I will be about the situation. One verse that I want to give whoever this person asks or whoever else is there in the call, 1 John chapter 4, verse 4. You, my dear children, have overcome them because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. How will you overcome? How will you keep your head steady? How will you keep your faith strong when everything is falling apart? Because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. And that is what will enable you. Thank you for the question. Thank you so much, brother. We'll move on to the next question. Yes. How do you know, how do you know what is a specific ministry that God has called you for? And this is a difficult question in the beginning. God will not show you your entire life plan straight away. Two verses I want to give you. One verse we already saw in our session, that is Isaiah chapter 30, verse 20 and 21. And there it was very clearly told that though you got the bread of adversity, your teacher will not be hidden from you. You, as you move to your left and to your right, you will hear a voice behind you. So if we think a particular ministry or a particular area of profession is our calling, start moving in that direction. And as you move in the direction, if you are going in the wrong direction, God will tell you. If you are going in the right, di right direction, God will confirm to you. Another verse that I want to give uh, for others who are wanting to find the will of God regarding their career, regarding their job, is Colossians chapter 3, verse 16, 15, 16, and 17. It has got a threefold way of finding the will of God or confirming the will of God. What is the threefold way? The threefold way is, first it says, Colossians chapter 3, verse 15, 16, and 17, it says, let the peace of Christ rule in your heart. So whatever you are doing, if you have God's peace about it, well, that is the confirmation. The second one is, the let the word of God dwell in your heart. So whatever you are doing, see what God's word is saying. And God's word, as you read the quiet time, God's word, as you listen to Ayah speaking in the church, God's word, as you go it in a Bible study, God's word, as you listen to some message, what does God's word say? What does the peace of God say? Second one, what does the word of God say? Third one, in Colossians chapter 3, verse 17 says, whatever you do, do it in the name of God. So the name of God, is God's name going to be glorified as a result of me doing whatever I'm doing? The precondition is, you need to be having a consistent walk with the Lord and God will tell you what is the specific ministry he has called each one of us. Thank you. Thank you so much, brother. Yes. We'll move on to the next question. You need to be fast because a yes. lot of questions. Yes, 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 absolutely. The next question is, could you narrate any one incident that has drawn you more closer to God? Any one incident that has drawn you more closer to God? Yeah, there are about two or three, but I'll remember one incident. There was a time in uh, my uh, company where, um, I can't give you the uh, details, but this company was an American company. I was the managing director of the company. The company was merged with another uh, Canadian company and together, uh, you know, it became a merged entity and there was a lot of uncertainty in the job. Now, at that point in time, I was thinking, you know, what is this? I was featured in various magazines and everything and I was given a lot of uh, publicity and here is a situation where the job was uncertain. And I was almost about to lose my job because of the uncertainty, because of the kind of complexity that was there. As I came back home, as I was driving, you know, that was the time where I said, Lord, is my faith, is my confidence on the job, on the company, or on you? There was about 24 hour uh, time frame before they made the organization announcement. And in those 24 hours, I can remember, I went big straight to the word of God. I said, Lord, what is it that you want to teach me? What is it that you want to tell me? And that was a time that brought me really close. And I know that I was fairly growing very well, but over a period of time, success got ahead of me and I moved the object of my security, the object of my comfort from the God of comfort to the things that he blessed me with. I turned my attention back to God. And of course, the next day morning itself, uh, another uh, professional associate called me and he said, listen, we want to talk to you. We can want to have breakfast with you. And uh, uh, I was, uh, you know, I was offered a job straight away and I went to US. Bottom line, what I uh, uh, 
I'm trying to say is the moments when we think we have it all and we have lost it all, that is the time when we come closer to God. And this is one such opportunity, one such situation in my life, which really brought me close to God. And from that time till today, uh, I'm so glad that that moment of truth dawned on me where my security had to be on him and not on circumstances. Yes. Thank you so much, brother. That was really inspiring. There's a question which has come through the chat box. How to overcome laziness? Overcome laziness is easy. Memorize Proverbs chapter 6, verse 9. How long will you lie there, you sluggard? When will you get up from your sleep? Apart from memorizing that, how do you overcome laziness? I'll give you an alarm clock. Most of us like alarm clocks, right? We want an alarm clock. We want to get up at the particular time. I'll tell you the best alarm clock is Proverbs chapter 6, verse 9. How long will you lie there, you sluggard? That is one. The other one is, how do you overcome your getting up early in the morning? By sleeping early the previous day. Learn to fight the battles. How do you overcome laziness? Be accountable to somebody. Be accountable to a colleague. Be accountable to a friend. And I'll tell you one thing. You work in a corporate world, you will never have any reason to be lazy. The kind of pressure that you will be in, you will work hard. My recommendation is have an ecosystem, have an encourager who will be able to get that. And here I want to give you five people in your life whom you need to have. Who are the five people? You need to have a Barnabas, an encourager, somebody who is encouraging you. You also need to have a Paul, somebody who is discipling you, somebody who is giving you those instructions. You also need to have a Timothy, somebody whom you are discipling. You also need to have a Mark, somebody who is disagreeing with you, somebody who is having a different thought pattern. And you need to have a Peter in your life, like Paul and Peter of different personality. You need to have somebody who is diametrically opposite in your personality. Once you have these five people in your ecosystem, you will be able to overcome not just this laziness, but a whole lot of other problems because you are part of an accountability system. Perfect, perfect, brother. That was perfect. Going on to the next question now. How do you overcome the temptations of the corporate world and, and still be successful? in your spiritual life as well. Yeah, so I gave that verse, Colossians chapter 3, verse 23 and 24. Temptations will always be there. But recognize whom are you working for? Where does your strength come from? I'll give you one example. When I was working for the Tatas, this was long ago, I was in sales and marketing. I was about to get a huge order, uh, which was uh, close to about 30, 35 lakhs. This was in the year about uh, 1986. And 35 lakhs in 1986 was a lot of money. In fact, at that point in time, it was one quarter of my target. I was about to get that. And, you know, I, the tender evaluation, everything was over. And I finally went to uh, the head of the institution who was about to place the order. And then he said, okay, this order is yours. This is your uh, product and everything has been selected, but you need to take care of our people. I said, take care of your people? What do you mean take care of the people? Then they attended. He said, sir, you need to give 2%. 2% and when I looked at that 2%, 2% what? He said, yeah, this is what. And the bonus that I was getting, you know, uh, I could have comfortably uh, possibly done uh, something about that. But then I looked at it, I said, why should I give 2%? 2% for what? There's a big temptation. But I came back and I said, listen, if I'm not going to do it, what will happen? They said, you will not get the order. You will be uh, taken out of the shortlist. That temptation was a huge temptation. But I uh, came and I prayed. I said, Lord, I know that this is a difficult situation. I'm at my quarter end. And this is the amount of the order that I need to fulfill and exceed my quota to get my bonus. But they're asking me for doing something unethical. This temptation is difficult, but I know that I want to say no. So I prayed and I had a peace of mind. I knew that uh, this was not the right thing for me to do. I went, uh, went to that uh, person and I said, listen, I'm not in a position to give uh, 2%, whatever. I'm sorry, you take a decision, whatever you need to take. You have said that we are the selected vendor, but you have all, if, if this is your condition, then it is okay. 
ultimately i ended up losing the order but more important i got my boss to back me i called up my boss in bombay those days i was in bangalore and i said here this is the condition but before that i had prayed my earthly boss i uh, called up and i said sir this is what they are asking me they said no problem withdraw withdraw don't get involved in that i uh, this is just one instance and there are so many other instances that are there so the generic answer to this how do you overcome the temptations of the corporate world you overcome by the temptations of the corporate world by continuing to depend on the lord who gives you that strength and encouragement and not by going on situation or circumstances is god perfect uh, the next question after god time work time and family time a very little time is left to focus only on ministry how do we manage our ministry time i think what we need to do is stop compartmentalizing our time this is an unfair question can you imagine you have got 5 minutes or 10 minutes or 15 minutes of quiet time and then 8 to 12 hours of your work time 1 to 2 hours of family time obviously you will not have any time for ministry the moment you compartmentalize 24 hours belongs to god 24 hours you need to work 24 hours you need to be committed to your family and 24 hours you need to have a ministry if you compartmentalize i i don't have a quiet time for 5 minutes or 10 minutes or half an hour i i consider my entire work as a worship i consider my entire work as my time for god so the work and god takes care of it when i come to family family it is important for us to understand that family needs quality time and not quality quantity time you know you give them 5 hours in a day they'll get bored with you but when they need you you need to give them time when they need you to listen you need to give them that time so that quality time is necessary ministry is all through if you look at the motto that i gave you let your career be the carrier of the gospel so you work as unto the lord that itself is a ministry acts chapter 1 verse 8 is a beautiful verse which says you will receive power when the holy spirit has come upon you and you shall be my witnesses Uh, in jerusalem in judea and into the rest of the world so god has not called us to be advocates god has called us to be witnesses who is a witness a witness is somebody who faithfully shares what he has seen experienced and heard so in my job in my family in my uh, work or wherever i am living if i continue to witness continue to share what god has uh shared in my life god what i have experienced that itself is a ministry uh francis of assisi he said preach the gospel always and when necessary use words there are five gospels that are there the gospel according to matthew the gospel according to mark the gospel according to luke and the gospel according to john but the gospel that everybody reads is the gospel according to you how do you live your life how do you work through the work itself take the case of that brother lawrence who wrote the book practicing the presence of god as i am washing the dishes as i am in the kitchen i am practicing the presence of god so please don't compartmentalize your time some time for god some leftover time for the family and work all our work all our family everything belongs to god and if we work and practice the presence of god always we are ministers under the new covenant Yes, perfect, brother. There's a question that's come through the chat box. The corporate world demands a certain lifestyle to follow, like drinking, socializing, etc. At times, can we participate responsibly or moderately in such activities? What are your Absolutely. thoughts about? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I was head of sales and marketing, but I was not taking alcoholic drink. Many of them they considered me an oxymoron. Oxymoron. I mean, man, how can you be in sales and marketing and not drink? Well. many of my friends they asked me brother you go for these parties where there is alcohol served i said yes i go for the parties where there is alcohol served and then they asked me do you enjoy those parties i said you want me to tell you the truth yeah yeah please tell the truth i said only i enjoy the party all the others are violating the laws of gravity there so please understand that for you to enjoy something you don't have to participate in that you can comfortably participate in that and you drink whatever you want in the early days i used to uh, not have a stronger faith or mature so i used to go around taking uh, coke in my um, glass or orange juice and we would or worse sometimes in the early days i used to take apple juice apple juice looks like whiskey 
So, you know, then nobody would bother me. And I said, no, no, I'm not uh, standing testimony. Let me go ahead and do what I need to do. So then the people, they said, what is this? You don't drink. I said, no, I don't drink. Yeah, actually, I drink, you know, let me drink something. <laughs> what I drink is my problem. What you drink is your problem. Nobody can live without drinking. So don't get into not drink. Drinking alcohol is not good. I can tell you that because you're under the influence of alcohol. So the question is, should you submit, should you give in? The answer is no. I have lived 40 years of my corporate life by facing all these challenges. In fact, when I was a country manager of a Bay Network, they knew my stand of not uh, taking all these uh, things. You know what they told me? They said, listen, you have to entertain clients. You have to be in this big business meeting. So our recommendation to you is when you're entertaining a client, please don't order the first drink. Let the client order the first drink and then you order your fresh lime soda or whatever it is. So there are guidelines that are given. Companies respect what you do and they don't impose all these things. So don't come under the uh, false notion that you need to succumb, you need to compromise, you need to give in. Not true at all. Today's world, everybody can practice whatever they need to practice. Don't get into compromising. It is always that little that you give in and pretty soon you don't know what has happened to you. Thank you so much, brother. That was a wonderful answer. And I'm sure most of the crowd would have had these questions on their mind. Uh, okay, now I would like to give over to brother Griffin Salins to continue with the question and answer round. Over to you, Griffin. Thanks, Neil. Uh, so the next question which has come up is, uh, what are the possible job opportunities after lockdown? And what could be an ideal job search methodology? Yeah, first of all, we need to understand that the economy is going through a very difficult time. There are certain jobs that will not exist. There are certain jobs that will be ready, uh, existing in a smaller capacity. But at the same time, there are a lot of jobs that will be opened up. Okay. Six months ago, did any of you think that you will be having your worship service through a Zoom call? Six months ago. So there is a whole lot of opportunities that is coming from four or five categories. Work from home, learn from home, exercise from home, shop from home, and whatever else from home. So anything that is in the digital economy, anything that enables you to be productive at home. I'm into consulting. Eight out of the 12 clients that I'm consulting in are increasing their budget for learning from home, working from home. So there are a lot of opportunities that are available. There are a lot of opportunities. Now come back. I'm also teaching in a B school. So I finished my B school assignment, the last lecture. And after that, people got placed. And that happened in the month of February. But rightfully so, the recession hit in. And uh, the company which gave them a confirmed job offer, they wrote back to them and they're saying, we are going through uncertain times. Your joining date is deferred. Now, these people, they got very frustrated and they said, what is this? We got a confirmed job offer. And because we got a confirmed job offer, we can't even go back to the placement cycle. What do we do? So they called me and they called me professor. They called me professor, sir. Uh, what do we do? I said, listen, don't worry about what the company has told you. You write back to them and tell them, thank you for deferring our joining date. But we are not sitting idle. We are doing learning from home. While we were waiting for your job, we looked at the job competencies, we looked at the kind of requirements, and we are already learning. We have en enrolled into, I'd already encouraged them to enroll into MOOCs. MOOCs is massively online open courses. Get into Coursera, get into Udacity, Udacity, Udemy, and so on. And you tell them, these are the learning path that I've got myself into. These are the courses that I've got subscribed to. Six companies gave them deferred the joining date. And these employees wrote back to all those six companies. And these are the four or five people who contacted me. You know what happened? The company said, wow, you guys are not sitting idle. You're already productive. We are going to advance the joining date for you because you're working on digital technologies. You're working on working from home. You're working on learning from home. We want to engage you to participate virtually in our company. So these guys, and you all know that delay is the deadliest form of denial. When the company says your joining date is deferred, there is nothing like deferred. It is actually a nicer way or a diplomatic way of saying, listen, we are sorry, we are withdrawing the job offer. So rather than getting their job offer withdrawn, 
these four students who contacted me they said thank you you know rather than the others sent them a stinker mail they said sir our company will blacklist you from placement all sorts of i mean our b school will blacklist you some of them took a negative stance but these four students they said sir we are going to learn and these are the courses that we are going to do in the next one month in the next two months in the next three months so they got an advancement of the joining date and that was a beautiful thing so how do you do your job search you do your job search by making sure that you are available on the digital platform learn to be active on twitter learn to be active on linkedin in linkedin there are a lot of uh, these discussion forums learn to participate learn to do micro blogging revisit your bio data and here i want to give you a guideline all of you need to go back into your profile revisit your bio data and every assignment every engagement that you have got revisit it into what we call the star format what is the star format write down whatever engagement you have got in the star describe the situation that you were in what is the situation you are in what is the business situation t what was the task that was assigned to you in that business situation a what were the actions you performed to fulfill the task and r what were the results that you achieved as a uh, result of being given that task do them in two or three bullets per point and rehash it and the software will pick up your five letters in today's world and you will be able to get the right job provided you are prepared for it and don't worry about experience or no experience because today's world does not require the skills of yesterday or day before yesterday they all are current so you can keep yourself up and running as long as you are current yeah thank you sir for uh, elaborating on that uh, there's this last question that we'd like to put to you uh it's uh, how do we overcome the lust of the eyes well lust of the eyes uh, or for that matter any temptation is a difficult one lust of the eyes so you make sure that you populate your mind with the positive things overcoming the lust of the eye uh, or overcoming any lust of the flesh or the pride of life all these three big temptations are things that cripple you take the case of david david when he went up to the rooftop when he saw there was no problem in the sea when he saw bathsheba bathing but he continued to look so the problem that is there is are you continuing to indulge looking is not a by itself a, a sin but indulging is where you get into your sin a problem and when david indulged he ultimately yielded to sin so how do you overcome you overcome by memorizing the word of god you overcome uh, 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 david himself later on said i have hidden your word in your heart that i might not sin against you so how do you overcome the lust or the pride or the uh, temptations by hiding god's word in your heart and meditating on it and that is how you overcome thank you thank you very much sir uh we haven't been able to take all the questions due to time constraints however uh we uh, we request you there's this uh, email id on the screen of uh, more than the email id i want you to follow me on twitter anand double underscore pillai because email takes a longer time to respond anand the double underscore pillai uh, is my twitter id so follow me and ask me questions on twitter and i'll be very happy to respond to you perfect thank you so much sir over to rakesh and nisha thank you anand sir for uh, patiently addressing all those uh, queries and uh, thank you griffin and uh, snehal for uh, meticulously managing the entire process uh, for all our viewers who are tuned in to zoom uh, i just want to put in a word a small message uh stay tuned because we have an activity coming up for you at the end of this session uh after the concluding prayer uh we'll move on to the next session uh so feeling gratitude and not expressing it is like wrapping a present and not give, giving it right so your willingness to put it all in words is all that is necessary and to do the honors we have a humble gentleman with a grateful heart and that is none other than our president of the united basel mission church council mumbai mr vishal shri thank you rakesh am i audible yes, yes we can hear you. you we can hear you all right 
Uh, so uh, my video stands off. Uh, Anand, the whole idea is not to be appearance biased, but uh, maybe for a better uh, voice quality over the video quality. Well, good afternoon, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, firstly, I would like to glorify and thank our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, uh, for making this event a source and a channel uh, to touch upon the life of our youth and working professionals, especially during these uh, testing times and the challenging environment around us. Secondly, on behalf of the United Basel Mission Council, its churches and the entire family, I would like to extend our wholehearted gratitude and a big thank you to our brother and guest speaker, Mr. Anand Pillai, this afternoon. He has humbly accepted our invitation to share the word of God. He has also helped in preparing us, channelizing and overlapping, I believe, the life of Daniel for us uh, so that we are able to take up the challenges in our world that exists today by way of his impeccable sermon, uh, the powerful presentation, and the answers to some of the queries that exist in the minds and hearts of our youth. I'm sure Anand's uh, words and presentative statements have uh, touched upon the lives of our young brothers and sisters. And we are hopeful that life from now on will be more celebrative and more meaningful for them with Jesus being the nucleus of their lives. I would like to quote a verse from the Bible this is nothing but the mobile number of Jesus Christ, which is Jeremiah chapter three, 33, verse 3, J-E-R-3-3-3. It says, call unto me and I will answer you. And yes, indeed, today during these challenging times, it is important that we call on to our Lord, as Anand sir has rightly depicted uh, in multiple ways, as to we need to reach out to God for any and everything and every situation. Uh, that we are into. Uh, on the praise and worship side, the Bible also says in chapter 40, uh, verses 3, he put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see and fear the Lord and put their trust in him. With this verse, I would like to thank uh, Brother Selvam Nader for his wonderful praise and worship time. Uh, it was really a mesmerizing experience for all uh, who were present. Uh, last but not the least, I would like to put this on record that this event or the conference of such a large stretcher couldn't happen overnight. It required a lot of planning and deliberation. In fact, uh, I recollect that the wheels started rolling weeks and weeks ago with each and every member in the back end having a bird's eye view of the minutest of the details be it uh, right from the uh, messages that are being sent on Instagram, on Facebook, or uh, be it, uh, you know, the, the, the flyers which are going as teasers on the WhatsApp notification and so on and so forth. I was really thrilled and delighted uh, to see uh, the, the motivation uh, that our youths carry, the ideas that our youths carry, and uh, God willing, uh, they will continue to uh, help and be the strong pillars of our churches going forward. Hence, I would like to thank the entire youth committee, uh, the technical team, the musicians, including the pastors and the office bearers for putting up such a massive, massive conference. And that too, uh, virtually with the limitation of the lockdown. Uh, I cannot thank everyone enough though for their uncompromised willingness and untiring efforts on the completion of the task beyond uh, their comfort zone. Uh, thank you all once again for your support and participation uh, with the youths within Basel Mission and the youths who have connected with us outside of the Basel Mission churches. I, I have seen and I've known of some of them who, uh, you know, logged in internationally from Canada, from Dubai and various other places across the world. So really thankful to you all. Uh, and as the Basel Mission Council, we promise that we will stay in touch and bring more and more meaningful and spiritual programs for our youth in the many more days to come. Uh, lastly, as Anand sir rightly said, excellence is being better than you were yesterday. And I leave you, youth, and the entire team with this thought. God bless you all and stay safe. Thank you. Over to the moderator. Thank you, Mr. Shiri, for those thoughtful uh, words of appreciation. 
we now request brother selvam to lead us in the time of worship wow it's always a sheer joy to i'm leaving no no what was that at the top one it's always a sheer joy to hear uh, anand pillai sir and uh, most so patient to me and may the lord bless him mightily and this song that we are going to sing is called one desire i would request uh, uh it was a project on the screen can we all sing this together for a heart one desire god who keeps our hope alive faithful friend in time of trial jesus your heart one desire god who keeps our hopes alive faithful friend in time of trial jesus i will call upon you in the middle of the night then surrounded by darkness god you shine so bright i will call upon you in the middle of the night when surrounded by darkness god you shine so bright desire god who keeps our hopes alive faithful friend in time of trial jesus your heart to one desire god who keeps our hopes alive faithful friend in time of trial jesus I will trust your promise every word you say when all around is falling I won't be afraid amen I will trust your promise every word you say when all around is falling I won't be afraid shout your name every day we will shout your name all the way we will shout your name your heart one desire god who keeps our hopes alive faithful friend in time of trial jesus hallelujah hallelujah amen i'd like to sing the last song for today 
and you can join me singing this song is called pyar karta hu and uh, just like rakesh was singing uh, you know without the word jesus it like it looks like that you are singing to the to your beloved ones but uh, yeah this song is very close to my heart uh, because god uh, changed my life uh, you know he inspired me to write this song in a time of distress in a time when i was seeking for answers so many people asked different kinds of questions and i just would like to say that you know when we are honest before god when we cry out to god he is always good enough to answer us and he is always good to redeem and deliver us so even as i'm singing this song pyar karta hu i would just uh, request all of you to just uh, switch on your videos and we can sing this together and yeah It's going to be an amazing time. Wow. Thank you Stefan. He's one of my good friends and I just like to acknowledge that UBM has been a great blessing to me personally one of uh, the worship leaders a minister from your church Sheldon Bangera has personally been a blessing to me and so many of us Uh, and in many ways yeah thane ubm i'm from thane and uh, the church in U, uh, thane ubm has been kind enough uh, to uh, you know stock some of the food distribution activities that we have been doing during this covid so ubm you are a blessing to so many of us so we'd like to just thank you and acknowledge this uh, we can you know switch on all our videos and maybe we can just stop uh this lyric projection and we can sing this song together yeah main tujhse pyar karta hu main tujhse pyar karta hu main tujhse pyar karta hu yeshu come on griffin main tujhse pyar karta hu main tujhse pyar karta hu main tujhse pyar karta hu yeshu तुझसे प्यार करता हूँ मैं तुझसे प्यार करता हूँ मैं तुझसे प्यार करता हूँ ये मैं तुझसे प्यार करता हूँ मैं तुझसे प्यार करता हूँ मैं तुझसे प्यार करता हूँ ये दौड़ता हूँ तेरे पास तेरे बार मैं लौटता हूँ या मैं दौड़ता हूँ तेरे पास अपने हाथ खाक मैं कबूल करता हूँ मन फिराता हूँ दिल से कहता हूँ अपने हाथ पाकर मैं भूल करता हूँ मन फिराता हूँ दिल से कहता हूँ चच मैं तुझसे प्यार करता हूँ मैं तुझसे प्यार करता हूँ मैं तुझसे प्यार करता हूँ ये मैं तुझसे प्यार करता हूँ मैं तुझसे प्यार करता हूँ मैं तुझसे प्यार करता हूँ सो गुड टू सी ईच वन ऑफ यू थैंक यू सो मच फॉर सुचिंग ऑल यू वीडियोज दिस वर्ड से अवे फ्रॉम बिलफुल सीज मुझको तू ताई के पापों से बचाए रख मुझको तू ताई के पापों से बचाए रख अपने हाथ उठाकर मैं भूल करता हूँ मन फिराता हूँ दिल से कैसे 
अपने भूल कर ना हो मन मेरा ना हो दिल से कहना हो मैं तुझसे प्यार करता हूँ मैं तुझसे प्यार करता हूँ मैं तुझसे प्यार करता हूँ से प्यार करता हूँ से प्यार करता हूँ से प्यार करता हूँ तेरे बिन कौन मुझे छुड़ा सकेगा तेरे बिन कौन मुझे बचा सकेगा यीशु तेरे बिन कौन मुझे छुड़ा सकेगा कैन वी खाया बिगॉड तेरे बिन कौन मुझे बचा सकेगा तू ही है जो मुझे छुड़ाता है तू ही है जो मुझे बचाता है ये तू ही है जो मुझे छुड़ाता है ऐशो मैं तुझसे प्यार करता हूँ मैं तुझसे प्यार करता हूँ मैं तुझसे प्यार करता हूँ ऐशो मैं तुझसे प्यार करता हूँ मैं तुझसे प्यार करता हूँ मैं तुझसे प्यार ऐशो chorus. <laughs> तुझसे प्यार करता हूँ तुझसे प्यार करता हूँ मैं तुझसे प्यार करता हूँ मैं तुझसे प्यार करता हूँ मैं तुझसे प्यार करता हूँ Thank you so much for giving me such an amazing opportunity to be with all of you. अरे ये रिमूव अभी. Worship you. Amen. Thank you, thank you, brother Selvim. It is always a blessing to hear you minister through your songs. Uh, this was such an amazing thing. uh i think a wonderful experience for all of us and to keep the momentum going uh i'm sure we are all having a nice time uh let's make it even more memorable uh i said we'll do this activity after the concluding prayer but i think this is the right time we bring this in uh we have a small uh, surprise for you uh to all those viewers on zoom at the count of 3 i want each and every one of you to turn on your cameras and Simply wave at the camera or just give a thumbs up. At the count of three, are we ready? One, two, three.
thank you everyone we call upon our youth director pastor vinod isaac for the closing prayer let us pray gracious loving heavenly father we thank you for making this day successful as we depart lord we ask you to be with us help us to serve your people with the love of christ despite the many challenges we face give us your grace that we may be able to handle even the most difficulties as we have been taught in this meeting we lift our eyes to you o lord because our help come from you once again thank you for making this meeting a successful i direct your paths i give us the confidence to follow your direction lord and many of us came with troubled hearts but all fears and anxieties have been washed away help us to also focus on you I need a word. I know the things of this world that cause us to depressed and anxious. Lord, we thank you for Brother Selvam for being with us in worshiping you, and also for Brother Anand Pillai, whom choose to be with us with your words. Lord, bless their ministry mightily in the coming days. Lord, bless our UBMC Council and office bearers who are passionate towards your mission. I bless the all ayas who are present here with their prayers. Bless all the technical team and creative team who work hard for making this event success with the talents you have given to them. Bless all the youths and members who are part of this event. God, thank you for reviving us to this event. Celebrate life. Yes, Lord. Celebrating life is nothing but feeling and recognizing your presence all the time of our lives. Thank you for everything, O Master. All glory and honor to you, Lord. May your love and grace continue to guide us in everything that we do today and in the future. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let us say. I'll say together the Lord's prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that the trespasses against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. For ever and ever, Amen. Receive the benediction in faith, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, Amen. Thank you, everyone, for your participation. You've been a lovely audience. Stay, stay home. Stay, stay safe. Stay, stay blessed. You, I want to celebrate you, I want to celebrate I got joy singing in my soul, turn me up like a radio, I can't keep it to myself and I don't even want to, to me in, to your frequency, run it through every part of Back to you I got you